Hello, this is Patrick with New Jersey's Outdoor Adventures YouTube channel. This is my 1961 Airstream Bambi. I purchased this as a project vehicle. Now, although I'm not doing a tour of the vehicle today, I'm going to show you a couple things about it before we get on to the project that we're going to do. Uh, this I'll be towing behind my Airstream B190 camper van uh, occasionally. But they only made a few hundred of these from 1961 to 1963. And there was two versions that they made. They made a California version and they made a Jackson Center, Ohio version. Uh, this one was made in Jackson Center, Ohio where the current Airstream production facility is. It's 16 foot long and it's about seven and a half foot wide. And they're very lightweight because they were pretty much bare bones back then. There's no rooftop air conditioning and it has minimal components on the inside. As you can see the window frames here, they're all hand riveted, buck riveted. This is a tempered glass front window I just put in. You can see the inside's pretty much empty, uh, but we'll do a tour video later on. Uh, I had a, a problem with the entry door with it leaking. Now this door has flew open in transport at one point for whoever had it. So the door knob and some of the door accessories when the door flew around it punched a hole so I had this uh, segment replaced in the middle. Um, but the, you can see the hinges are a little messed up which doesn't allow the door to seal completely flat at the top and Airstream when they manufactured this they put a rain gutter up top so when the water ran down off the trailer it didn't run behind the door gasket uh, but it is now you can see it's all cracked and it just needs to be replaced so it's not a part that you just buy over the counter uh, it's, I don't have the machine and tooling to reproduce that but there are people out there that do. So I contacted uh, Colin Hyde, and he has a specialty shop for vintage trailers and does a lot of fabrication there. And I had him make a new eyebrow. And I'm wearing uh, just the gloves so I don't get fingerprints on everything, and that's pretty sharp. He, he handmade this, and it matches. Uh, pretty much exact to what's up there already. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drill out all the rivets that are up top there and clean it up real good. And then I'm gonna Olympic style rivet, new rivets up top and use some uh, seam tape to you know, keep the holes where I drill the rivet from leaking inside the trailer. And once that hits the sun and it expands, I'll cut it and then I'll seal it really good. So now up here you can see there's a whole bunch of rivets that this is fastened to the aluminum body. When Airstream manufactured this in 1961, and they still do it today, they use buck style rivets. So it's a two person job. The inside of the trailer would have been gutted. There would be a guy on the outside and a team member on the inside and they would literally buck each rivet and flatten. Uh, I'm not going to gut the inside of the trailer today, um, like the aluminum panels and everything, so I'm going to use an Olympic style rivet. So what I have to do first is I have to drill out each and every one of these rivets all the way around. Uh, so I think, believe there's 12 all together, so I'm going to get started. I have a 964th drill bit, and I'm going to get right in the center. There's a little dimple in the center. And these are pretty thick, but they're aluminum. And I should uh, put some eye protection on while I'm doing this. And you can see once I get through, I'll pull the top of the rivet off. I pulled out some insulation. You wanna make sure there's no wires back there. There's no electrical on this trailer, but some trailers there would be. So you don't wanna punch through any electrical or plumbing. You want to try to get as center as you can. 
You don't want to slip and uh, drill the part of the trail you're not working on. So I'm going to continue this all the way around, then I'm going to remove the, the eyebrow. Okay, now I'm down to the very last rivet. And what I did was instead of drilling all the way around and getting to the last one, I didn't want it to flop down. So I skipped this rivet, and this will be the last one, and this should come right off. It's important to start it slow so it doesn't walk. see the fiberglass insulation, the original insulation comes out with the drill bit. All right, now this eyebrow can come off completely. As you can see, it's got a lip in the back, a lip in the front, but it's all messed up and it wasn't sealed to the body. And water was running down the roof over this gutter rail here and behind the door. The door doesn't shut completely tight. Now I'm gonna redo the hinges at a later date and I'm gonna put new gaskets on, but since uh, this was a little marred here and sharp, if anybody bumped their head on the way in, they would cut their head open. Uh, I just figured it'd be better to uh, replace the eyebrow. What I'm gonna do is before I clean this up, I'm gonna grab the new eyebrow and you can see the seam tape here. Uh, I'm just gonna make sure it lines up. Now I might need to, it's malleable, so I might need to bend a little bit to line it up, but let's see how it is. So what I'm gonna do when I install this, I'm gonna start from the center and work my way out, kinda bend it to fit so it lines up with the, the way it was in the past. And you can see how it sits over the door. That will keep uh, a lot of the weather out. So let me get this cleaned up. So I don't more to finish. I'm just using a, a putty knife here to put some heavy tape on it. Uh, it just sticks to the trailer so it's easy, but I don't wanna scratch when I'm going up. So just going around where the rivets are, starting it. That's the tightest spot. That's the spot that you need to scrape the most. Peel it off. You can see it just crumbles. What I want to do is clean it really good. So when I put the, the new seam tape on, it'll stay flat to the body better. So I'm going to continue this all the way around. Now they got most of the seam tape off. There's a little bit of residue. And it, this area is very hard if you're trying to polish or clean the trailer because it's underneath. So now's a good time. I got this stuff years ago. Uh, it's like Brooklyn's Best uh, Aluminum Polish. And I'm not trying to go for the high shine look on the trailer, but it really cleans up uh, the body very well. So you can see the difference from the part that was never polished to whoever polished it previously and then in between. So there's a ball bearing in here. It's gonna shake it up really good. Now this, guy, this is sold in Brooklyn. Uh, the guy sells it out of his 18-wheeler uh, truck to polish like aluminum rims, but it does an amazing job. But it does take a while. Once you apply it and you let it soak in, you can see the, the haze of aluminum that it makes. But it cleans all that residue off Now this is going to take a while to get all the way around. I'm now going to get this last section cleaned up. I've done, made it all the way around. Took about 20 minutes. You can see how shiny the aluminum is where it was never in the weather before. Some people really like that polished aluminum look. Uh, I don't mind it either way, but I do prefer just the matte look of the weathered airstreams. Okay, it's all clean. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the new eyebrow up and kind of line it up and see how it lines up with the holes. If I could use the, some of the existing holes, that would be helpful, but it's going to take a little bit to line them all up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to line it up, try to center it, and this is malleable, so 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the top center rivet first once it's kind of lined up and instead of riveting in a place I'm going to uh, drill out a hole and screw it into place so I could bend this to conform to <clears throat> the existing holes and then I'll take the screws out take it off then I'll use the seam tape and I'll, I'll put the limpic rivets in So that's where I'm going to drill the first one. just going to hold it temporarily. Now I can make marks on all the rest of the hole. So I'm going to start from the center and work my way around this side. Then I'm going to do the other side. I'm not putting these in all the way because I don't want to mar the aluminum behind it by squeezing it tight. These are just to hold it for measurement purposes. Now I'm not an expert at this. My guys in the shop are, but I wanted to do this one myself. So you could do most of this by eye if you needed to. That one is. do a couple more and we'll get to the end and we'll do the other side. down to the very last one. This uh, requires quite a bit of mending and curling to get it in place because it sits right on top of a rivet. But because it's malleable enough I was able to get it to line up. And it's not as crucial that you have a perfect seal here. And the whole idea is that the water's going to run off of here and run here instead of down the seam of the door. rivets still in behind it. Didn't fall all the way through. Okay. Now it's fully installed. I got it all lined up and it's all mended. So what I'm going to do is take a rubber mallet and just hit the areas that buckled out to get them to be flat before I put the seam tape behind it and start doing the Olympic, Olympic rivets.
pretty good. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove all the screws and put the seam tape in. Now I gotta drill the holes bigger for the Olympic rivets. So this is the seam tape we're going to be using now. Airstream uses it for in between the segments before they buck rivet them together. And uh, under the pressure it squeezes out of the sides and they cut it with a razor blade and it really gives you a nice seal. I'm going to use it on this so water doesn't roll behind or get behind these rivets. Uh, so I'm going to put it behind here on this rivet line. But I don't want it, you know, underneath the door it's going to be hard to cut. I don't want it sticking out there so I'm going to leave it proud on the top part. So I'm gonna run it over the edge just a little bit. And it's not crazy sticky because it's pretty cold out today. Let me get that all the way around. And you kinda kinda curl it to the shape of the piece of metal that you're working on. All right, now that I got the tape on here, the seam tape on here, nice and firm. Uh, one tip, if it's really warm and it gets really sticky, you could use baby powder and that will make it not sticky and still allow you to install it. So I'm gonna line it back up and I'm gonna put all those screws back in place that I took off. And then I'm gonna remove them one by one and put an Olympic rivet in its place once I drill out the hole. Now this tape, can start walking on the drill bit and pulling itself. So you don't want to do it full speed. That was one of the tips from an Airstream technician that they gave me. And I'll put all these screws back in and then drill it all out. Don't forget, I had bent it, so you might have to, you know, maneuver it to get everything to line back up again once you took it off. But everything's lining up pretty good at this moment. Once it's all installed, I'm going to cut the excess with a knife, making sure not to scratch the trailer behind it. Put the last one in. Perfect. Again, I didn't want to snug them down. So I don't want to mar the finish because the, uh, uh, the Olympic rivet is going to be smaller. Now I changed the, the drill bit out to a 532nd, but I got to remove the top screw first. And everything else will stay in place. And I got to drill this out. Just be careful that seam tape. Insulation. And I could put the Olympic style rivet in its place and right in its hole. I'm going to remove a couple more and get the rivets lined up. I'm going to leave these and I'm going to start pop, uh, popping these rivets in place. Now these are all set, the rivet in place. Let me grab the rivet gun. All right, now I, what I want to do is make sure the rivet's fully in case before I start 
popping it. Now you can do it with pneumatic rivet gun, but I'm not doing a lot, so I'm gonna do it by hand. And these are aluminum rivets, rivets so it's not like a stainless steel where you gotta put a ton of effort into it. Okay, that pops and it leaves a little piece. I'll show you what we're gonna do with that later. Because we want the rivets to look like the buck rivets throughout the trailer. leaves just a little tab there. You're gonna make sure you, you discharge the top of the rivet before you move on, otherwise it won't let the next rivet in. Gets uh, very gooey. But baby powder would help, but it's so cold out today. Yeah, it's not extra sticky. Make sure that's in all the way. Perfect. Now let's take a look at our work. So that seam tape is oozing out of the top. I'm going to cut that with a blade. But I have all the Olympic rivets in place. Now what I have to do is cut them with some snips so that are close to flush. And I use a special shaving tool, it's a specialty tool. And you can see there's really no seam tape sticking through the bottom. That's a very hard place to get it out of if you got it in there because of the curvature. Now I'm going to get a real sharp pair of snips and cut them as flush as I can. But I want to make sure, I'm going to be careful, I'm not going to scratch this. So let's see if we can see that. Make sure you got eye protection on. The key is to get as close as possible. I'm going to do this all the way around. Now that i got them all cut all the way around, I'm going to cut the seam tape with a sharp razor blade. Because I don't want to get any of this stuck in the shaving tool. It's a very expensive tool. It's a specialty tool and I had to borrow it since this is what, not what I normally do every day. So I'm going to cut this all the way around. Now I'm not trying to make it perfectly neat. I'm just trying to get it out of the way for the shaving tool. It's getting pretty gooey. I'm not slicing into the trailer either. I'm pulling as I ride the knife along the edge here. Now that I have the whole surface all cleaned all the way around with the seam tape, I'm going to grab my specialty tool. This is a Byler rivet supply. that They make this. And uh, it goes into a drill. And it spins. And inside there's a little plunger in here that shaves the top of the rivet smooth so it looks like the buck rivets that are here. And you just kind of line it up and then you're going to put the drill on low and plunge it right in. And it, it requires a little bit of skill. I've never done one before, so we're going to give it a shot. And also, when you buy these tools, they're about $350. It does need some adjustments for the depth. All right, with safety glasses on and the tool installed in the drill, I'm going to start shaving the heads of these so they look just like the original buck rivet. And what I'm told is you got to hold this really, really hard get the drill spinning and then plunge it in. You know, make sure it doesn't walk and mar the trailer. So let's give it a shot. Never done one before. I walked a little bit. Let me see if I can get some better leverage. Looks pretty good. Let's try another one. 
I guess the key is, is getting enough pressure on it before you plunge it. Nice and smooth. Now I'm going to continue and go all the way around. You want to make sure you when you rub the top of it that there's no nothing sharp there. So when you go to clean or wash the trail, you don't cut your hand. Perfect. Now let's take a look at the work after the head's been shaved. I got the hang of it towards the end and I went back over each one. You can see how polished the heads are now and they look very similar to the original buck rivets that are on the trailer. Now I'll get this will ooze out some more. I'll cut it one more time and I'll take some 10x and seal the top so when the rain comes down the trailer it rolls over this, hits this and shoots out past the door all the way around. Well, this is Patrick with New Jersey's Outdoor Adventures YouTube channel. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please like this video, comment, share, subscribe. I love it. We'll see you soon. And I'm going to have more videos on the Airstream Bambi throughout the different series of uh, improvements I'm going to do to the trailer. So we'll see you soon.